oftentimes people ask me what it's like to be the sixth generation of a family business, and I tell them that my family and I joke that there must be a specific sequence in our DNA that is labeled art dealer because how else could we still be going strong after 175 years? I am coming into my 15th year in the business and I'm currently the director of the day-to-day -day operations of the gallery. My sister Beth is also involved in the business and she currently works from home designing our catalogs and marketing materials as she cares for her two young children. And my parents, Bill and Marcia Vos, are also still involved, coming in a couple days a week, making the big decisions, and all together we, we work as a very good team. My parents were bringing me into the gallery when I was six months old, and my earliest memories of working at the gallery were from when I was eight and my sister Beth was five, and my parents would bring us in for gallery openings. And instead of sitting around being bored, they would actually put us to work, and we would wear matching little plaid skirts and aprons, and we would help the caterers serve hors d'oeuvres for the evening, which gave us a thrill because we felt like we were a part of the business and helping out, and the clients got a kick out of it. It was really just, it was wonderful. Beth and I were exposed to art constantly growing up. My parents took us everywhere. We were always going to museums and galleries and uh, artist studios, and we even would you know, spend weekends at clients' houses. We, without even knowing it, were sort of developing an eye through osmosis, just being surrounded by so much art. And as we got older, we developed this game when we'd go to galleries and museums, where we would cover up the label and test each other on, you know, which artist it was. And my father would be there kind of giving us hints and pointers, you know, oh, this is the artist that, that does the pudding rocks, um, which would be Durand. Uh, this is the artist that does the most intricate lace out of all of his contemporaries, which was Gilbert Stewart in his opinion. Uh, we just soaked it up. It was just the, the most invaluable experience growing up, constantly being exposed to art, and it actually created a real love of art. Beth and I both did lots of drawing and painting growing up, constantly doing art projects. We took art lessons, and it became a huge part of our lives to the point where in high school we were winning awards and competitions for our art. And by the time we got to college, it was a really tough decision. You know, my parents never pressured either of us uh, to come into the business. They wanted us to be happy and follow our passions. And so I initially, uh, instead of taking studio art and art history, decided I wanted to become a wildlife biologist. And I was off on exciting adventures all over the globe, feeding musk oxen in Alaska and um, studying vultures in Kenya. And then I realized that the research end of wildlife is not nearly as glamorous or fun, and it's very tedious, just crunching numbers behind a computer all day, which was not the way I wanted to spend my life. So I went back into studio art and art history, and I focused on foundry work as well as some blacksmithing and glass blowing. I also did art history, and my sister became a fabulous ceramic artist and also studied studio art. I think having a knowledge of the process behind painting and sculpture um, is, gives you a really unique perspective on selling art because you really understand the process behind it as well as the, you know, the finished product. When we were pretty well decided that we were going to come into the business, my parents would take Beth and I down to New York City to the American Art Auctions to really help flush out our, our knowledge of art history and American art in particular. And we would see upwards of 1,500 paintings in a weekend from the various museums, galleries, and auction houses that we would go to you know, really deciphering between an A-plus example by an artist and a D-minus example. And on top of that, we were really schooled in how crucial uh, learning condition on antique paintings was. Uh, it, we, we would blacklight 30 to 50 paintings at a time and learn about all of the various condition issues that can occur, which is, is crucial in this business. It was a very steep learning curve when we first started full-time at the gallery. We were expected to start at the bottom as interns, and we were doing everything from shoveling snow out front to helping the conservator repair old frames. And it really gave you a, a knowledge of every aspect of this business, which um, once you're running your own small family business is, is absolutely crucial. We also learned very early on that if your last name was Vos, uh, clients were constantly asking, I want to speak to a Vos, and if you were the only one around, you'd better know your stuff. So. Although we did not start out in sales, we certainly didn't have any choice but to know a lot about the artists that we represent. My father was one of the best salespeople I've ever met. 
I would sit at the front desk as an intern and just watch him. And he was so good with clients. He was so natural. He had so much passion and enthusiasm. And that really, to me, was, was the most important thing in sales. If you love what you're selling and what you're doing, um, it just, it, you exude it. And my mother, on the other hand, um, was a personnel manager with the old Ritz Carlton when she met my father. And she brought that business acumen into the business. She's a fabulous manager, she's a very shrewd businesswoman, and she, on top of it all, is extremely creative and has really been the driving force between all of the blockbuster exhibitions that we've had over the past 35 years. Um, I feel so lucky to have had them as a resource and as mentors through this whole process. The most important things I've learned in the business are that drive, perseverance, passion, and hard work are integral to making this place work. And since we moved here in 1960, my father estimates 250 galleries have come and gone in that time. And, you know, I think a lot of people just don't realize how much work it takes to run a gallery. I know that the previous generations would be very proud to see that we're still going strong and more than a little shocked to see women at the helm for the first time. I can honestly say that there's nothing else I would rather be doing than running the family business. It's, it's never a dull moment. My grandfather always said that uh, from day to day you never know what's going to come through that door and that is as true today as it ever was. Uh, I'm so proud to be able to shepherd the business into its 175th year along with my sister and my parents and who knows maybe in the year 2041 when we have our 200th anniversary I will have the pleasure of teaching my own son, niece or nephew the ropes of this fascinating business and if history has anything to do with it my guess is that we will still be here.